Okay, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to do the roller coaster interactive assignment on Schoology. It is in the week nine folder, and it, the point of this assignment is to cover the kinetic and potential energy that would be involved in a roller coaster. So you guys are going to start by clicking on the interactive assignment. Go to my document. So this is what you should be looking at. All right, so first up, uh, this is a picture of what you should see when you go to this link. So you're going to want to click on this link and then go to that website. And then click launch when you get there. So you get here, uh, you can see that you have a roller coaster. If I zoom in a little bit, it might be a little bit easier to see. So the graph represents the amounts of potential and kinetic energy at each point. Uh, so it does not include fr friction or energy loss at all. So if I click play, all right, you'll watch the roller coaster go through track. And then you can add steps in at each point. So you can click on each point with the steps, and then it'll take you to each point. And you, what you're going to be looking is you're going to be looking at this pie graph, and you're going to give, be giving me an estimate of it all. So at point one is where we're going to start. <clears throat> so at position one, the kinetic energy is zero, and the potential energy is 100%. So then at position two, oops, wrong button, this tab. So you can see that because the potential energy is this maroon color and kinetic energy is blue. So at this point, you can see that all the energy in this roller coaster is potential. So that's why I'm putting down 0% um, and 100%. So then you're going to click on station two, and you can see that the majority of it is now in kinetic energy, and there's a little bit of potential energy. So I'm estimating that at 99% kinetic and 1% potential. You can then take the roller coaster to number three, and now you can estimate again. So let's call this 80-20. Again, these are estimates. There's no numbers that pop up. I'm getting, I'm trying to get you to understand how the energy changes and to make an estimate. So there are not going to be any numbers that pop up that tell you, oh, it's exactly 80 and 20%. I'm trying to get you to make an estimate. So the kinetic energy here at number three is kinetic and potential. You can see that the majority of it is in blue. So I'm going to go here. Let's do 80 and 20%. And you're going to go through and you're going to click on each station. So there's four, there's five, and then there's six. So those will take you through each one. And you're going to give me an estimate about how much of the circle each color is taking up. So you're going to say, give me, so for station six, you're going to give me an estimate. This is about maybe 60%. And maybe that's uh, 40%. So give me an estimate on these ones. Don't worry about it being super right or super wrong. But give me an estimate. So that should take you up and help you finish out this table. All right, so next we got the discussion questions. So what this says is think of an example of an everyday life where potential energy is being transformed into kinetic energy. You're going to draw a diagram, or in this case, we're going to be taking a picture of it from the internet. 
and then describe the information that you see in that picture. So uh, I'm going to use this example of a sled here. So what I would do here is picture. So for this picture, um, you can use the explore function or you can just Google it. So if I just open up and type in sledding, and I found a good image. Right, here's a good one. Copy image. And go here. And I'm going to hit Control V to paste it. And I'm going to resize it just so it fits. All right. So my description for this picture would be, when I carry a sled to the top of a snowy hill, the potential energy increases. As I sled down with my sled, the kinetic energy uh, is trans is transferred, and the potential energy is at its maximum. As I slide down the, the hill, it is transferred from potential to kinetic energy. So we've talked about that when you carry some, the two factors that influence potential energy are mass and height. And the two factors that influence kinetic energy are mass and speed or velocity. So what you're doing when you get to the top of a hill when you're sledding is you are increasing your potential energy by increasing your height. The higher you go on the hill, the more potential energy you'll have. So then when you start sledding, you start in motion. So the, your mass moving at a speed creates kinetic energy, which is transferred from the potential energy you gained at the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. Here, another way you could do this is by clicking here and then clicking the Explore button. And you can click here. You can explore the web. So I'm going to try to think of another example. All right. So skydiving. All right. I'm going to try to use a, an image here. And it looks like that's not going to work. So for some reason, it's not letting me connect. So find a picture online. So don't, don't do this part that I just did. So find a picture online. All right, so if I want to do, let's do skydiving. Here's a good one. Copy image. Go here, paste. But for this one, my description could be as the plane. Climbs higher into the sky or flies higher. When they jump, so when they jump, that potential energy gets transferred from potential to kinetic, and they begin to fall towards the ground and begin to move. Remember, potential energy is the energy of standing still, and kinetic energy is the energy when things start moving. So you don't have any potential energy while you're moving, and you don't have any kinetic energy while you're standing still. So I'm looking for you to find any picture that has potential and kinetic energy in it, and give me a description 
describing how kinetic energy is transferred into potential or vice versa. So again, please give me a good example of this. Don't just copy what I'm doing. So skydiving and sledding are off limits. Find something else. There are millions of other examples that you could use. Think of sports. Uh, think of things that are that swing from high up or fall. You can think of jobs. You can think of cars and roads and stuff. So think of something and be creative here. So finally, this CER portion is what amount of energy of PE and KE, what is the amount of PE and KE in position one on the roller coaster? So you're going to go back up to this picture here. And at position one, you're going to make a claim about that. So here on position one, oops, what's my claim? So what are you claiming the potential energy is? Okay, so you're basically going to be explaining this. So then your evidence is going to be what physical evidence do you have? And you did, you have evidence from the simulation you did. So use that evidence from the simulation there. Reasoning connects your evidence and your claim together to explain why you're right. So you can say something about why your claim is correct because of your data. And all this stuff needs to be in complete sentences, guys. That should be very obvious. If you give me anything one sentence or less, it's going to be wrong. You can't explain yourself in one sentence. All right? If you were trying to argue with your friend why you think uh, iPhones are better than Androids, you wouldn't have that in one sentence. You can't do that in one sentence. So you same with science. You need more than one sentence here. So your reasoning could be is my claim is correct, and restate your claim, because when I was doing the simulation and the roller coaster was at the top, here's what the it read, and I know that because when kinetic energy uh, is zero, when something is not moving, so therefore... So what I'm saying is use the words potential and kinetic while you're trying to figure this out and just explain what you experienced here. So what, do you, what did you experience while this was at number one? And give me a good description of that and that will give you the right answer for this, is claim evidence reasoning. Make a claim, give me evidence about your claim, and then give me why was your claim right. So your claim is what happened. Your evidence should be data on what you observed. And then your reasoning should be why you're all right. using the scientific concepts you've learned in this class. So go back and use your, you can use your notes, you can use that Nearpod to you know, explore what we are talking about and, ex and uh, remind yourself of the concepts that we did in this class. So that's to take you through the end of this assignment. Uh, hopefully this, was this video is helpful. If you need more help or additional um, guidance on this, reach out to me and we can schedule a Google Meet where I can sit down and do this with you in person. All right. Let me know if you need any help and click the submit button up top when you are done.